From Atlantic City, New Jersey to Norman, Oklahoma, from Holland, Michigan to Winslow, Arizona, let's ride. We want to ride shotgun with you for the next hour, talking trucking with Deaton and Doty. How's it going, guys? Good, good. How are you? Doing great. We got Christian from the Dawson fleet with us. He's, uh, you can see him on the screen. We've got Tom, our, our reefer and flatbed planner. Tom's with us today. We've got our um, VP of business procurement at Metal Arc. Uh, Ryan Spoonmore is with us today. And also Brian Ashmore from Truckworks on the show. We'll, we'll be doing Wide World of Sports with Joel Howell. Ray battles Kumar and trucking questions with Kumar. And we'll take the show out with Johnny Five. Join, he'll be joining us to take the show out with stories from the road. What's going on in your world over there in Roanoke this week, Christian? Well, Ryan's on the show, so uh, he's a concert lover. Uh, so I'm just thinking about Jamie Johnson. I got to watch him a week ago Saturday in Roanoke. So that was a cool show. Uh, really just kind of taking a look at the market, see a couple of things changing and spending some time with the kid here this weekend in Tennessee going fishing. You know what's funny about Jamie Johnson? I like some of his songs, but I yeah. he looks so different from when he first got popular he was clean cut and all that yep. and then i saw <laughs> tina showed me a picture of him of, uh, maybe a month ago i mean he's got dreadlocks and a beard that's down to his knees and he looks yeah, easy top different. ever needs another yeah. musician he can fit right in he's only like what like 45 yeah he's young yeah that's not that's, old it doesn't look it with the beard though yeah so uh what's uh, been going on out there in montana Right. Well, besides uh, besides the snow, uh, just uh, same old, same old out here. We, uh, we, we're we enjoying the weather. Uh, we just got a golf tournament coming to Montana, a big one in July. You'll get to watch on ESPN, I believe, or NBC. Uh, Is that Phil, in Billings? No, Big Sky, Montana. It's one of big our Sky. premier resorts. Okay. It's going right next to that Yellowstone Club yeah. where they have all the big wigs. It's called Moonlight Basin. I think uh, Phil Mickelson and uh, – uh, I believe uh, Tom uh, Tom Brady are going to play against Bryson DeChambeau and Aaron Rodgers. Uh, uh, so they're going to play. I think it's watch. a best ball match ball. So July sixth okay. is uh, when they're. Gonna... And if you want to get on the course, I can't get you on there. You got to know somebody. <laughs> I know Louis Vasquez. Yeah, I don't know if Louis <laughs> lives up there. Uh, so today on the show. Um, I want to go over a couple things and then we'll dive into what's been what you guys have been seeing in the market. Um, we watched that DAT webinar and I take some information off of there. The fuel surcharge this week was 38 cents a mile. Um, an overall market update, load to truck ratios, van slightly down nine, nine to one, uh, nine loads to one truck, reefer slightly down 9.8 to one, and flatbeds still on a tear, 88 loads to one truck. Uh, and that's an average nationwide. Uh, spot markets, van was 240 plus fuel, all markets. Reefer, 277 plus fuel, all markets. And flatbed was 274 plus fuel, all markets. Um, and the forecast, they do a pretty good, uh, they do several different algorithm models for the forecast. They're saying that rates for van through mid-June should go up another 10 cents per mile reefer up to 285 plus fuel and fu and flatbed the same up to 285 plus fuel so it, it looked good for the next you know two to three weeks maybe 30 days and then the other thing i was uh, they mentioned on there and i thought it's important because it happens every year is tropical storm seasons coming up uh, which does push the fuel price up a little bit and will drive capacity up Ian's going to touch on that a little bit more. I think there was the first named tropical storm or depression. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so what? So what's going on over there in Roanoke? Uh, well, we've got a, a lot of trailers getting services done. Um, yeah. We've got uh, another blitz coming up here in two months for brakes and uh, chafe lines. So those are things that, you know, a lot of mid-trip inspections miss. So as they're coming on the yard, we're trying to make sure we get a good eye on the brake lines and not have any low hanging fruit and uh, keep the equipment up to par. I think there's a, a blitz, a safety blitz week, the week after July 4th. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. It's July, yeah. August, somewhere there. Yeah. And then 30 days after that, there's another one. 
Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So <laughs> that'll be the end of the blitzes for the summer, I believe. Um, I, I ran Ray. I kind of messed up. I think I made my first mistake uh, ever. Uh, I ran Ray short in Texas this week. I so Monday I booked him uh, up, or I'm sorry, down from Oklahoma to the Dallas area, and then down to Austin, and then back up to Dallas. And I was sending him home. The last load I booked, I didn't check. They sent it to our our dispatch email, so everybody sees it. The last load I booked on Monday, they never sent the rate con. Um, and then Ray called Mike Doty and uh, last night and. And Mike called me, and, and we looked through all our emails, never found it. So I told him, I said, well, this morning I'll just find something else. So we, I got up this morning and jumped right on it. I, I didn't even know who I booked it with, I, you know, and so I didn't know who to call. There was nothing. I had no notes. Yeah. So I booked another load at, at about 8 o'clock. As, as soon as I told Ray, I called Ray, and I said, I got you something else. He had to be home. It's his daughter's graduation party this weekend. I said, I got you something, man. He's like, uh, that guy just called me from the the company that I'd booked that other one with. And he, he's like, he asked me if I was set for pickup. And I was like, oh, no. Interesting so, story, actually. So I had to, I, I said, well, Ray, give me the number because I didn't, I didn't have their number. So I called the guy and I told him, I said, look, man, we've looked through all our emails. My whole staff did. I don't have anything. Maybe you forgot the CO at the end of Metal Arc, maybe something like that. He did say, well, he looked at everything. He goes, we forgot to hit send. We never sent it to you. So I said, well, I'm sorry. I got to come off the load. And I hate doing that, but yeah. it was one of those things. So, yeah, my mistake for the week. Yeah, it's an honest mistake. It happens. <laughs> yeah. What What have you been seeing out there as far as the market goes out your way in Ohio? I mean, it's been, you know, we have trucks all over. So it's been a little softer than it has been lately. I think we're, I think we're seeing a little more capacity. Mm -hmm. uh in in certain areas because you know we all talked about it you know the blitz week really there are a lot of carriers you know held back some trucks so we're yeah. getting all those trucks back into the market i think uh so i mean but it's not substantial I, a little yeah. softer it hasn't you know the rates are still still decent what what about you what do you think yeah, I think there's a little bit of a yo-yo, like you said, from the safety blitz going on. Um, I talked to my customer in Ohio, and, and um, she basically moves everything two days ahead. I mean, half of her Friday shift is gone. Uh, everything for tomorrow is already off the board, which is irregular. Uh, we're going into a holiday, so typically it means you want to place your guys in good areas and get them moving early because uh, a lot of people like to shut down early on Friday and take Monday off. So you want to put them in a good state where you can stretch their legs and make money uh, or start to position and get towards the house. I'm just not sure because PA and Maryland had a little bit of that weakening as well. Ohio was another state. Um, I wasn't sure if it's just a yo-yo or if it's freight, freight is down or trucks are up. I didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, you know, DAT, you can track that on a 30 day history. So yeah. I didn't get a chance to look behind it. I just know what the effects are uh, when we have guys there. So we're trying to, We've got a majority of our guys knocked out for tomorrow and, and a good portion on Friday already. Yeah, that's what we kind of targeted this week was getting people, getting everybody planned by, uh, and we were hoping that we didn't have to have too many guys pick up Friday because you know how that goes. Yep. A lot of places close early. and you Close down. So you're the last just, one to know. Every Memorial Day, every Labor Day, I'm always, you know, like somebody's going to get stuck. Somebody's going to get stuck yep. somewhere. You know, you're trying to avoid that. But Tom, um, Tom's with us. How are you? What do you think, Tom, with the reefers and the the flats we're running on hit on the dedicated customer there? So that's a, a little different. But the reefer market, Tom, what do you think? The How reefer market is is doing good. You know, we had the Florida tapered off a little bit, but I'm still doing out of South Florida to Grand Rapids, still four to forty two hundred for one and one, which is fifteen hundred miles. So we're doing okay. Um, I booked one for Steve today out of Nogales, load of grapes going to Buffalo, uh, 9,200, uh, Edric's loading tomorrow out of San Diego going to Atlanta for 9,000, 2,190 miles. So that, that Southwest corner is, is really, hot. really good. Yeah. 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 Um, 
there and I predict o- it's, over it, all the it, way up, really all the way up, Tom, and you know, uh, past all the way to Seattle. Yeah, I was going to say way. past SoCal. It's you know the the Bay Area is good, um, all the way up to Seattle, like you said. Yeah, Idaho, Utah um, is doing good. Yeah, Michigan's produce seasons get ready to kick off. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got that transition period. From when Florida starts to taper off, you got like three weeks to hit it good because the rates out of Florida will fall back to 33, 3,400 going to Michigan. But then you'll get five grand back out of Michigan back to Florida. So a truck can still do good for the amount of miles 1,500 down, 15 back. For, you know, a little over eight grand on the turn. And we're still doing good, like uh, we. Picked the load up in Michigan from our regular people up there, and it's it's two fifty a mile to Arizona, two fifty a mile to California, which is is good, you know, because if you look at the load board rates going out there, they're horrible. But yeah, I was I was happy do. with what you did, what you were saying with Jesse Tom today, because Jesse ended up on the on the East Coast uh, in Connecticut today got empty and we were tom and i were both looking trying to bounce him over to our customer in michigan so we could send him change it up with jesse he's been running north and south but tom said you know what look at what we've been getting out of the southwest let's just send him we don't usually send jesse to the west coast but he said let's send him so to go into you know the socal area what 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 are you saying well that's not a spot right but you got 52 or 53 to go over there when he picks up Friday? Yeah, uh, it was 53 for a one and one to 20. Riverside. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat that going into so- uh, SoCal when you can get eight or nine or even better out. Yeah. And the drivers are like, well, what are we going to come out of there with? And I said, just put your trust in me because I've been doing this too long. And they're like, well, we get seven grand. And I said, I guarantee it. Um, Tom's been doing this for 93 years. He's 120 like years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and the, go ahead. The Tom. flatbed rates, the flatbed rates, usually out of North Florida, South Georgia, they kind of are iffy, but the flatbed rates have really come up. I uh, loaded one this morning going up to you to Warren, and it was 3 a mile. And I reloaded them out of there going to California and got eight grand. Um, it, it's good. Then you know what I do in California. I get my right. 8,200 back to Valdosta with my stuff. And so flatbed rates have definitely come up in California, especially. Anybody that's going to run out there with a flat, it was always iffy. But don't be scared right now because the rates are really good coming out and the, of there and yeah. it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon i don't no. think so no yeah. um 88 to one truck is a that, that tells you the story right there nationwide yeah it's 42 yeah. 42 to one in california on flatbeds with eighty thousand postings this month alone yeah yeah and you if the reefers if a guy lived on the west coast i i mm-hmm. say this every year if you lived in Arizona or SoCal and all you did is run I-5 up and down, the rates, you know, there are no gallus to Portland today, 5,700. It was, it was crazy. And yeah. uh, it's, I look for us all to have a big year, real big yeah. year. Well, and if, if they're out that direction, they have a preference if they're listening between California and Arizona with AV5 potentially pushing through. Uh, yeah, stick with Arizona. Yeah. You know, with the contractor law, potential yeah. change coming up. Yep. Well, that that law doesn't affect us running in or out of there, does it? It's no, just correct. if they live there. Uh, if if they yeah. live there, but it's also they're looking at the liabilities to the carriers. Well, I'm not sure if you know Ryan has information or knows much about that. If he's yeah. read up I on think we're liability. All a little bit. It's if you live there. But you know, right now, we're, we're, we're talking to our drivers yeah. that we have out there currently in our network and like, you better get ready to move and let, or, you know, it's just one of those things we yeah, haven't heard right. on our traveling and in and out of there. We haven't heard yet, but if you're 
Domicile, That's what we talked yeah. about last week, Ryan. Um, you know, I think Christian has three guys that live out there. We have yep. one. Oh, no, we have two, Tom, because Keith, I didn't know Keith is a resident of California. Yeah, Lodi. Yeah. yeah, and then we got Mark Chavez. So we're, we're, all, we're all trying to figure this out together. Um, but so just so everybody knows, joining us today, that's who's talking there with the uh, uh, the nice blue shirt on. Uh, joining us today from Montana, the vice president of business procurement. He's worked at Metal Arc for 24 years. The father of seven kids. Our very good friend, the deal maker, Ryan Spoonmore. Yeah, as I say, I started here with one kid and hair uh, 24 <laughs> years ago. Uh, long story. Uh, me and my wife has six kids. We actually found our, uh, my wife had a child when she was 16, and we found him two years ago on Ancestry.com. Uh, and uh, a ble- I knew about it uh, when we first started dating, and that was the one piece we tried to find. So he is my son because he is a spitting image of my oldest daughter. So we have four boys, three girls. I've had uh, awesome. three of, wait, how many kids? About four have worked here at Metal Arc in some capacity. Uh, soon to be possibly my fifth child come through here and, you know, get on the phone, start making calls, talking to drivers, carriers, customers, and just kind of see what they like. And uh, luckily, Metal Arc, we have that ability in the summertime to let these kids kind of learn their chops and see if this is their, their uh, you know, career. I've told my kids this uh, transportation is a wonderful career. Uh, especially drivers. Um, I, the drivers are our lifeblood. And in the markets, you know, on the on the sales side, as I tell people right now, a blind squirrel can find a load. Uh, it's a matter about negotiating. And, uh, you know, our drivers, we got to stick out there and we're not sticking to these customers. All the rates are going up. You got to have conversations. Um, we're, you know, this this holiday week, you know, we have flatbed markets, bananas. We're getting offered four or five, six bucks a mile. Just they're they're pleading for it. Um, you know, it's just a matter of capacity, you know, with our logistics side and our carrier partners, they're under the same gun, but most of those carrier partners right now, they all want to be home. So long haul is the rates are spiking obviously that for this week. And then we, we see it'll probably die down a little bit next week, but we see a summer of a lot of capacity and we, you know, we just stick to our rates and take care of our customers, have those conversations. Our, our drivers should be able to make some, some good money and put money back in the pockets to the, to the drivers that, you know, the people that deserve it. They've been busting their butt for the last year and a half through COVID, and uh, it's time yeah. for that we reward them. Yeah, and we've been talking, Ryan, a little bit about uh, tender rejections with Christian. He's he's really got into detail with that the last few weeks. Um, how, how, are you seeing any of that? Are you guys having to give back? You're your on the brokerage side. Are you guys having to give back any uh, any low tenders? We're seeing some, obviously, on the contract side. You know, mm-hmm. you, you got some contract rates from – Heck, two months ago, we're seeing a little pushback, but most of the customers that we've stayed in front of and warned them, mm-hmm. they're very flexible. There's some customers that, you know, they want to hold your toe to the line, but, you know, a lot of them, we weren't the primary, we were the secondary, but then they want to flex on us and say, hey, we want you to do this. Well, the market changes. Um, but no, we, we watched those tenders. The spot market, obviously, these, you know, everyone gets delusions of grandeur. I can make 10000 a week, which great, do it now. But long term, if we can get these customers to realize, hey, bring your rates up. Let's take care of these drivers, get them the miles. Yeah. Um, we're seeing, you're looking at six or 7,000 average. You better be grossing out there for drivers, uh, for van. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's minimum. You know, the old adage was 5,000 paid it. Now, if you're not getting six or seven, you're not even trying. Yeah. And like you guys talked about, you can do it nine or 10,000 if they know how to play the market. You put a position in the right spot. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we actually got awards on a bid. We were the, the 28th ranked carrier. Uh, 27 other carriers denied all the rates from two months ago. And I've never heard that in my life as the, tw- you know, so that was a, a large shipper that came to us. They've never really talked to us. Now they want to be best friends, but we're able to, you know, with our, uh, with some of our trailers, uh, with our platinum trailers, where we load our trailers and have uh, carrier partners or our agents or our drivers pull them. Yeah. Uh, we've been able to give them some capacity. We're but, doing uh, some of that with some guys on yeah. our fleet. I know Mike Doty's pretty involved in the, in that pool. But it's daily calls. I mean, uh, Aaron Poley, who's uh, one of our salesmen, he's a former golf coach. He's a scratch golfer, competitive as it is, and he just gets it. You got to hear him talk to these customers. He just he tells them the truth. He utilizes some of these the data points that Christian, I know, was talking about. Just be open and honest with them, saying, we're not gouging you. This is what the market bears. So if, if you want to get in front of it now and be a preferred shipper, you know, do that. Don't be the person that sits on you know the, the rates and then pay that spot market rate where you're going to get crushed you know, right. this summer. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I always thought, you know, you should be able to have that open line of communication with your customer. And we're kind of that way with the people that we work with, um, especially the we have a couple here in Barberton. Um, you got to have that open line of communication. I, you know, our blinds customer, Ian, um, you know, the rates we were hauling those last year for were way less. And and we're we don't usually haul it on our truck because usually it doesn't line up to where we have a truck here so ian will get it brokered but um the rates have you know we're telling them hey this is what we and we're not our margin's small and and we're telling them this is what we got to move it for you know this is where we're at and and they they love us so oh, yeah. they, it wasn't hard to tell them you got to come up on, and it was almost double or or maybe more right ian yeah. yeah 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 no it's 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 been a total night and day difference from last year um Really, but, it is. But if you have that relationship with that customer to be able to tell them, "Hey, uh, this is what this is what we're going to have to move it for," um, you know, you're not gouging them. But you're taking it's mutually care of them. beneficial. No, you're yeah. educating the customer. It's in their benefit yeah. too. That's helped us. Yeah, for sure. Even if there are times where uh, we are able to get it way way down from what we thought we were going to be able to run it for, we'll even share it back and make that back to them. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, uh, are you seeing the same thing, Christian, with your customers? Uh, I mean, are you able to talk to them? And I am. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have a, a large protein customer. Uh, we bumped the rates. We just put another bump in today. So we hopefully we'll hear back here in the next 24 to 48. It's one of these things that uh, whether it's, it's an outbound market on the logistics side or on our own assets, it, it really isn't different. Um, cause the cost is what it is. Um, you know, sometimes explaining it, it's kind of like buying seafood at the right time of year. Uh, it's going to fluctuate. We also saw it here locally in Roanoke. We had a meeting, Amanda and I did locally with a, a duck supplier and it was a really good relationship. And it has been for the last six, seven years. Uh, and they get it. Uh, it doesn't mean they like it, but I think having an honest approach about it and letting them know where it is and let them know when the market corrects itself. Um, like you were saying a second ago, Hey, you know, we'll make sure we correct along with it. Our goal isn't to double our margins while we're in business. It's just to right. make sure that we are here to provide a business to you in the future. Right. We have equipment and, we, you know, we want to service the, you know, our customer, but also, you know, we can't, you can't lose, you can't lose money doing it. I mean, that's, that's why it's so important to have that relationship where you can talk to them. Yeah. And I'm just glad that guys are starting to find the value of commercial truck drivers for so long. They say, well, there's a shortage and, you know, the changing of the guard, the old guys are leaving and new guys that aren't experienced are coming in. I mean, you hear a lot of that through recruiting and through the development uh, this industry, yeah. I think now there's a validation that's going on that says, you know, time out, we do need these guys, whether they're box truck drivers, whether the driver on low driver assist flatbed. Um, I think there's a different understanding as funny as it sounds that a winter storm across the whole United States could change capacity. I think it shows you how delicate the market is, is and how valuable these trucks and the drivers are. You know, I know yeah. Metal Arc's position, as well as yours up in your terminal and ours, uh, they are. It's, you know, um, job responsibility um, for their satisfaction is job number one. And yeah. That doesn't change. But it's nice to see it's a more global impact. I mean, it stinks that it happens and rates are going up because it typically means the cost of goods are going to uh, rise a portion with it. But, um, you know, fuel's going up. We need to cost for that as well. Um, we can complain about it, but it's here and it's here to stay. Yeah, and like I mentioned, Ian's going to go over a little bit about the tropical storm season. Okay. But, um, every time we get into that season where we're starting to see, you know, tropical storms, you know, hitting the United States and hurricanes and stuff, fuel goes up. So we're the fuel's not going to not going to go down anytime soon. Yeah. Um, we know that. Um, so it's just it's part of it, I guess. Um, we completely lost Ryan. Up oh, there. Yeah, yeah there he is. Welcome back. He took a quick sales call. No, we had yeah. to. We had to. We had to recharge the meter real quick. Hand crank it. So, <laughs> yeah. So we're good. So Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know date? You know what's going on out there at the corporate office? What are you doing um, during the day? I mean, I know you got a bunch of people under you that are moving freight, and um, just kind of take us into that world a little bit. Well, my my team, I've got both the carrier and the customer sales side of it. Um, like I said, the customers, the customer sales side, it, it's a daily, you know, RFQ phone call looking for, as we're seeing it, everybody needs the long miles, the, the, the home time loads are all covered. They got that taken care of long haul over the road. 
that's what they're all dying on. Anytime they tell us about their, their lanes or the routing guide, they're like, Oh, we, we got that local Texas, but if you can do, and they just name points galore, Dallas, Texas is one of them right now. Everything locally in Dallas, Houston, no problem, but Dallas going everywhere outbound, they need help on it. Um, and we kind of watched the mothership down there in that little town, of Arkansas called Bentonville. Yeah. And you, you know, you watch their spot board. I mean, obviously they got more, more freight than you know, anybody and their yeah, spot the board world headquarters of Walmart. Correct. Right. So, uh, so you mm-hmm. watch their spot board and the, the money they're offering on spot. I mean, they're going to kind of dictate the market. If they're out there throwing four bucks a mile out and they got all the freight you want. So we got to yeah. kind of watch what they're doing because they can't miss their deliveries right. or me and you or me and you are mad because we can't pick up our, you know, whatever we need to buy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the carrier sales side of it, same thing. The carriers we talk to that want to, you know, team up with Metal Arc, pull our trailers. They always want that home time, which, you know, it's very important to drivers. So, you know, you guys have discussed in the past that that difficulty recruiting drivers for long haul that are away from the house two or three weeks. So that's why the long haul rates are going to have to go up because, you know, money talks, but we also got to take care of them. Uh, you know, right. better truck stops, better deliveries. Uh, don't be a customer that has poor deliveries or difficult, or you'll price yourself out of the market. Uh, right. Our drivers talk, our carriers talk, uh, our marketing teams out there. Uh, I'm over the marketing also. We're marketing out there to to, our, to drivers, to carriers and customers, and everyone's all in the same boat. It's, it's communication. If we all just communicate properly, but uh, there's some desperation out there. Uh, there's some customers that are trying to just pay us for the week. Here, six thousand bucks. Well, if I if I send you a thousand miles or two thousand miles, no matter what we do with you, we just want your truck. Yeah. But you want to get a long term relationship. Um, and the other market that's kind of taken off is uh, oil rigs. We've uh, moved two full rigs in the last uh, two months. I'm actually still part of the oil rig, so I got to go to Casper, Wyoming, and push on a uh, about seventy five loads. We moved from Casper to Murrieta, Oklahoma, and we're getting probably on average one maybe maybe two rig moves to bid a week. And when you start seeing that percolate, that means, you know, there's some money out there, um, but most of it is moving it out of Wyoming and North Dakota, and they're getting everything down Oklahoma, West Texas. So we're really seeing that going, but that also has the same problem. A lot of guys got out of the game. So the capacity crunch there is, okay, if someone else is moving a rig move and they sucked up a lot of that equipment, you got to make sure you got a price right. Uh, um, it's, you know, you can move a full rig, move a thousand miles and it might be $650,000 to move 70 loads. And they want it done in, they want to load it in. Well, we loaded those 72 loads in two days. Wow. Um, and then, but they, we had a great crew, um, RW Jones out of Utah. They have a great crew that just, they know how to load it. They've got winch trucks and pole trucks. And, you know, what we do well at Metal Arc is, you know, we had our trucks there, uh, some of our uh, agent trucks and along with our uh, preferred broker carriers and, Every day we had about 35 drivers ready to rock and roll. Um, and with a rig move, it never goes the way it plans. Nothing loads out the way you want it to. Everybody's got to realize you might load it right away. You might wait eight hours. It's just kind of nature of the business, but we pay you well for it. And then get it delivered as fast as possible because with oil companies, you know, time's money. Right. But uh, so that's, it's an interesting market and that's all flat. I think that's all flat bid and heavy haul oversized. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we thought we had a pretty robust rate on the flatbed out of Casper, almost what, four bucks a mile from Casper to, to Oklahoma, mm-hmm. probably more difficult than moving our large loads just because there was no inbound into Casper for flatbeds. So we had to bring them out of Denver. Um, so that, that flatbed market is definitely, I mean, out of Casper, Wyoming was always a dead, <laughs> dead spot. I mean, I, four bucks a mile is a pretty good rate right now for a flatbed out of there, but yeah. Um, and then 200, we, 211 loads. To truck ratio. Yep, it is. It's it's That's a it's, it, and it's just nothing coming inbound. Um, we the flatbed market out of Texas to Utah, um, seven thousand dollars from Houston to Salt Lake is what we're getting. A uh, customer actually came to us and told us, uh, "You're not charging enough. I need to pay you more money." They couldn't cover them, so they gave us. They said, "Just charge us whatever." And we're out now moving two a day for them instead of two a week when she couldn't cut, handle them. So we stay in front of the markets. Um, you know, uh, up here in Billings, we're continually, you know, hiring drivers, you know, helping out our agents uh, with our over the road apparel, you know, getting that out in the market also. So it's a, it's a fun time. We're getting more involved uh, with, you know, Mandy being over everything. Uh, we're trying to, she's going to Dallas for three weeks with her kids. She's doing the combination, uh, you know, sales trip slash, you know, be a mom. 
but mm -hmm. uh, she wants to get out there and it's, it's kind of interesting. Texas being an open state, uh, most customers are still under the guides of their corporate office where they can, they won't visit with you. Um, so that's interesting to get some of the appointments out there. They all want to talk to you. They all have freight to give you. They just, you just can't walk in their doors. Yeah. But, uh, but carriers are willing to meet with us. That's how We're it is see. here in Ohio. Yep. Cause Jim Stonk is in our office, you know, with it, just like everybody else, he had to stop visiting. He was taking gardener pies to companies. And that's a big thing here. And, you know, dropping stuff off and, and then all of a sudden it shut off for a year. Uh, June 2nd, it opens up. We won't have a mask, man. We don't have to wear a mask after June 2nd here. So we're all excited about that. But Jim mentioned that the other day. He's like, finally, I can get back out there and just, you know, knock on some doors, some companies around here. Because um, it's tough when you can't, you know, it's hard yep. when you can't do it face to face. And we're getting now, uh, even in Texas, a lot of them said uh, August 1st. Y'all heard about July 4th. You know, that was the big date. You know, yeah. um, we thought Texas being so open. They're still, and the, they're basically mandated by their corporate office, which is normally not in Texas. It's probably up in the, in the East Coast, a lot of places. Yeah, that makes I sense. Get it. I understand that. You know, if you're an office of a thousand people and we all decide to go down and see, you know, a hundred of us walk through the door, I right. get that. So um, um, GE, uh, we met with those guys, but they can only meet off campus and they haven't been in the office for a year and a half up yeah. in Louisville. Mm -hmm. You know, Louisville, Kentucky being locked down, that was uh, interesting compared to going to Indiana. And me being from Montana, I can walk into Walmart, any Walmart without a mask on. And I, I got, I got accosted by the lady at the front, but that was, uh, but uh, no, it's going well. It's uh, we're seeing those rates go up and uh, we uh, obviously, you know, more drivers we can get out there. So any drivers listening, you know, get, get us those, uh, get us those uh, drivers we can call on and we can get you those uh, driver um, recruitment bonuses. Yeah. So. How's the project that you, I don't know if you might be done with it. I think it was in New Jersey. You were telling me still about going. It. Yeah. Right up the, uh, it's uh, the high moving a lot of loads, aren't you? <laughs> yep. Denver, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. We're building a parking garage, a lot of oversized uh, flatbed dedicated, pulling the trailers of the actual concrete company and the steel company. That's probably going to still go with all it probably till December. Mm -hmm. And then there'll probably be, you know, we're going to be bidding on three or four more per year. So, as you know, as we do this and uh, learn more about that company, we see this as an ongoing project. Um, you know, being it is in the a lot of the, the union area that the woman owned business does help us with that. Uh, so it, it's been uh, it's, it's rewarding. We've learned a lot about dealing with people out of Jersey. It's a fun little time up there. Uh, Brandon Hurst could tell you some good stories about uh, going out to New Jersey and New York. Uh, <laughs> Got out to but, New Jersey. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I know. Yeah, so I some of your cousins are up there, you know, dealing we're dealing with. But no, it's a it's a great learning experience, and we're getting you know we have a lot of company drivers pulling those trailers. Uh, but the next project you know, it might even be double the size, so we'll need more uh, drivers up there to pull with uh, oversized and heavy haul experience helps. So yeah, but that's exciting. That's really cool. Well, um, Christian, real quick, do you want to just talk about? Um, I know you got your you know a ton of insight on. Uh, tender rejections and stuff. Just maybe share with us a little bit about what's going on in the next, you know, the last few days. I do actually. I prepared a little something on the up and to the right uh, with DAT as well. Yeah. Uh, give me a screen share real quick. Yeah. All right. Should be good now, right? You see yeah. the up and to the right. Okay. Yep. Cool. There we go. So DAT rate view is something that Metal Arc does provide for us here uh, as an opportunity to get actually with rate view, not just DAT, one of the basic uh, pieces of it. You'll find when you go to the rate view section, or uh, I guess it's power.dat.com, you'll have a little briefcase up here. And when you have it, you'll see lane maker, market conditions, and a lot of the things that we, some that we have covered and some that we will. Uh, and then there's a little rates button up here. What you, what you won't see on this is the hot lanes and hot states. But once you click on the rate view and you go back over to the briefcase, the hot states tab pops up. And so that does something different than your trips and your multi-lane and regional data. What it does is it gives you a view and you can change the different equipment type and you can change what month you're looking at for trends. Um, so similar to how Tom was saying Florida was starting to lighten up, you can look at the actual load postings that they have by month. And it's kept up to date week by week. Um, so this posting update was on 524, so two days ago. And you look and see that they have the state name here. They have the total posting volume. And then they have the load to truck ratio. So what we generally do is not a medium, but we put a marker. So we'll put a marker in here 
Uh, for instance, it says, you know, we want to have at least, you know, I mean, flatbed's insane right now, 754 loads to trucks. Like you talked about, Ryan, with Wyoming, uh, it's only got 19,000 loads. So you're absolutely right as far as the loads. Uh, so it's not drawing much, which also raises the index of which, you know, your capacity for load to trucks, opposed to, you know, Arkansas that has 206,000 load postings uh, for the month. So if we move forward to something that I'm more familiar with, which would be reefer, uh, what we do generally is look at this and say, okay, if we drew a proverbial line that we're comfortable with, which is eliminating two thirds or three quarters of the lower states, which states would we have a preference to drop in? Which ones have a huge load to truck ratio, which is you know controlling the volume of, of loads to trucks. Uh, but then we also wanna look at the posting volume, which talks about the actual activity because it, there can be a misnomer here. I mean, you might see that New Mexico is way out here at 36 loads to trucks, but it's only 5,000 loads. Right. Um, you know, by the way, it doesn't mean that surrounding areas like Arizona doesn't have 44,000 with the 32 ratio. So if I'm dropping in one of those two states and I can get the same rate, I can tell you where I'm dropping all day long. So we look at the states, we kind of pick the top 10, top five, whatever you want. Uh, we look at the total volume and then we look at the ratio. And so this, I just use 18 as a pinpoint. So anything under 18, I'm not looking at for dropping people in these states. And then we'll do the same thing with dry van. Dry van's a little different. And you can see we had ratios that were really over on this engine of the pendulum to the right, and it swung way out for, for flatbed. It's still out there for reefer. And then as you start to come back towards dry van, and as we saw with freight waves last week with the tender rejection slowing up a bit, uh, that's also going to change some of the ratios. A lot of that has to do with how many pieces of equipment are on the road and what the ratio, uh, the mixed pool is between equipment types. But this is the exact same thing. So if we pull up, you'll notice that the van and reefer um, are fairly similar to each other. New Mexico, the same thing. Uh, in this particular case, 9.31 is the load ratio with 6,000 loads, just like we saw on the reefer side. How it was one of the lower states, even though it contested to be a higher ratio mix. Uh, and I think that's the dangerous part that when some people look at the analytics, they say, oh man, you know, you know, look out to New Mexico. If I get out there, you know, I'm going to get a bang and load. And then you find out you have to deadhead 400 miles to pick it up. Um, you know, if, if I'm selling it as a broker, then I'm saying, hey, you know, take a look at the DAT index and see if you like the ratio. And if they have a, a load or a customer coming out, then you can sell it on a good side. Um, but with Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, California, I mean, you start looking at the volume of postings just in the month of May. And uh, then you look at the ratio. So this is just another tool that we use DAT. Um, yeah, like like the, I said, that, that is all California and, and Georgia, 130, mm -hmm. 137,000. 137,000 in Georgia. Yes. I mean, if, if we looked at this and I can pull up last month uh, later tonight and get with you, um, that we'll see that that bleeding from Florida coming up the coast. Yeah. And, you know, let's look at this. Let's revisit this in, in three weeks. Look mm -hmm. at where Michigan's at with 33,000 loads. I bet you three to four weeks from now, it's probably going to be 55 to 70,000 loads. Yeah. And so it's just, That's it's another trend. Us. It's another indicator. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, what Tom predicted last week, which we saw the week before uh, through freight waves is yes, there's the rejections have dropped uh, significantly out of Florida. They have raised out of Georgia. I did not uh, put the information on here, uh, but if I'm running a triangle, I'm running it from Kansas up to Michigan, back down to Tennessee, Alabama, back out Midwest and back up again. Yeah. Uh, I can drop, you can drop in Texas certain days and it's great. Um, I typically would drop in Texas on a Monday after everybody else left, if I was going to do it. But yeah. The Dallas, like else. the big cities in Texas seems like with Dallas, Houston area, just, there's a lot of capacity there. Mm -hmm. So I think even, and there is a lot of freight, but it seems like, uh, it kind of balances out well. So it keeps the price, uh, it's hit or miss, but it does keep it a little bit lower than. Right. Yeah. You the know. spikes, the spikes don't draw out quite as much. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you guys use that or if it's helpful, but you know, for anybody that's checking in, I would not just go with the uh, the state to state uh, indicator on rate view. That's something that I would look out. Yeah, let's look at that again in a few weeks. Let's let's okay. look and see you know how it compares to what we what we see now. Okay. Um, Joel, are you ready? Update us on the sports with the uh, Joel. How yeah, are we changing gears? Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, Ryan and Christian, first, thank you. I learn so much every week. Uh, being from the recruiting side, uh, even though I was a dispatcher for a while. Uh, in sports this week, what do we got? Around the league, in the NFL, 
The big news this week was uh, 28 stadiums are set to be in full capacity for the 21 upcoming season. Uh, oh, so they're going to – so no spacing, no cardboard cutouts. Of, right, right, yeah. right. They're, they're starting to lax on that a little, and That's cool. we don't know which ones, but uh, – 28 stadiums. Uh, Rogers still looking to be 60-40. Uh, 60 not being in a Packer uniform on opening day. Uh, he's gone, I think. That's what we were talking about before the show. I think he's going to the, uh, the Raiders. Uh, the rumors I'm Denver, okay with that. But uh, we got to make room for uh, Bridgewater and Drew Locke. So, and Blake Bortles. Uh, yeah, Bortles. It'll yeah. be – It'll be crowded, and the latest on Deshaun Watson was a deposition to begin in early 22. Yeah, he might be sitting out. I don't season. know. I don't know either. He may, he may, be, he may be around this year, uh, but we'll find out. So going over to the NBA, we have the playoffs starting for the NBA and the NHL here in May. Uh in the East right now, and they just started. It's a 1-0-2-0 in the series. Uh, Philly and Brooklyn lead the East uh, in the West is Utah and Phoenix. Uh, they have begun. There's four other teams. There's eight total, and we'll give an update next week on where they're at. They're just in the first round. Same with the NHL playoffs. They have 16 teams in the NHL, so there's a lot going on. They have four from the East, Central, West, and North. I mean, Pittsburgh, New York Islanders, Boston Bruins, Washington Capitals. Uh, we'll get back with that next week, too. Uh, that should be down to eight teams next week. Over in Major League Baseball in the East, still leading is the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, that is a tight race, along with the Central, the Chicago White Sox, Cleveland Indians. And out West, we have the Oakland A's. In the NL East, we have a tight race between the Mets, the Braves, and the Phillies. Over in the Central, same with St. Louis. And out West, a tight three-way race between the Padres, the Dodgers, and the Giants. So, Joel, i got to ask you this since uh, we got Brian Ashmore on the phone. Brian's in uh, Dothan, Alabama. He's from Truck Works, and he's going to get on here and talk with Ian for a second about the market of trucks. But... Roll Tide. We're trying to figure out, Brian, what Roll Tide means. And I've had a couple of drivers text me after the show. We mentioned it last week. Um, you got any insight on that, Brian? I actually do not have an insight on that. I'm not <laughs> a big... Brian's an Auburn fan. Answer that question. It remains a mystery. Well, I looked it up. And, okay. And... Um, it did say that it just basically means like go team or like it can be used for like many things. Like you get it's a hit by cry, a car, yeah. you can just say, oh, roll tide. Like War Eagle. Right? It's just right. like, it's yeah. just saying let's go. Yeah, basically. Like, it's like, like let's go. Okay. Basically, an anything word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it does get used quite a bit down here, though. I think it's still... Yeah, it's all over Alabama. And it's used it's in like my office. Barking and, it's barking Joel's, in Cleveland. I, Joel's from Al Joel is an Alabama fan. He Whoa. was born that w down that way. Whoa. So uh, Georgia, but I, yeah, yeah on the line. Yeah, my parents are a big Auburn fans. He was so born he, that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ohio yeah. State fan. When, what are you talking about? Yeah, Joel's been here for several years and in, uh, in, in Northeast Ohio, I, so he has definitely become a Browns fan. I have a coaching mentality. I've lived in eight different states. Like, yeah, you got to understand. <laughs> I think, and yeah, and you root for the Ohio State Buckeyes, too. Well, I, I did root for them in this last game, even though it didn't help. They got wiped off the yeah. field. They got run off the, yeah, Alabama. But um, So what was the last thing you had in sports there, Joel? I, I, we're going to talk about Phil Mickelson's victory in the PGA. I like him tour. behind you on that with the laser eyes because I'm – That's right. Yeah, I think that has something to do with Bitcoin going up, and I need it to go up because <laughs> I took a beating in two weeks on my Bitcoin. <laughs> well, Phil dropped out of the What's top I do with sports? 100. Well, that's because it's Phil. <laughs> before winning this last major. So if anybody had any money on Phil, they're doing pretty well right now. What were the odds on him winning that? 200 to 1? Yeah. That was I, crazy. It was no – one, no one expected that. Yeah. And then at 50, he was the oldest uh, player to win a major. Yeah. And, Little uh, known fact, me and Phil have the same birthday. Yes. Yeah. 
June sixteenth. Mm. All right. I'm well, a, he's a little better than me. He's a little better than golfer than me. Though. Well, happy birthday coming up, Brian. I'm sure I'll talk to you before then. But yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, shot a fifty-seven on nine yesterday, so he's better than me too. Yeah, Joel and I went right after work and. We're just terrible golfers, well, I but played six months. But, we bet two million dollars on nine <laughs> holes, and I beat him. He owes me a lot of money now. <laughs> I'm gonna eat some crickets. We bet some Bitcoin. Uh, but next up in golf is this weekend is the uh, Charles Schwab Challenge at Colonial Country Club in Fort Worth. All right. So another word that Phil's gonna be there. So Ray, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Ray's on the show. Ray, uh, Joel's got some questions here. Um, Ryan Kumar is our sound engineer in here. He knows nothing about trucking um, except these last seven episodes before today. He, uh, he works at a public school. So Joel's prepared some qu- a few questions, oh. and he's going to battle Kumar. Uh, Ray's going to battle Kumar and trucking with Kumar. What do you got for him, well, Joel? it's not real fair. But, uh, <laughs> We'll uh, try to get some better questions. Uh, Kum, you there? I'm here. All right. I'll, at least we'll give you some multiple choice. Uh, for the first question, we want to know what a lumper is. Is it A, a packer of goods to be shipped? B, someone who unloads a trailer for a fee? C, a bad tire with a bubble on the side? Or D, someone who schedules truck arrivals to be unloaded? D- didn't we already do this? Is this a trick question? Yeah, it, yeah. The answer we is did D. Do it, but I think. Right. Thanks, uh, Zach. Uh, we talked about doing it. It, it came up. Oh, so, yeah. Did we? But See, do you know you what remember, a lumper is? Do you remember what it is? Yeah. Uh, I thought this. He thought. He was, I thought he was multiple gonna choice would make this. He threw a curveball okay. at you. Go. Uh, repeat A and B again. Uh, all right. A is a packer of goods to be shipped, or B someone who unloads a trailer for a fee. B. Ding, ding, ding. Bingo. Oh, got it. First one you ever got. Hey, he He's got a, a couple <laughs> of questions because I had to eat crickets that second week. <laughs> All right. All right I may be a custodian, but I am smart. <laughs> well, CEO Jim Stockus wants to know what a green stamp highway is. A green stamp highway. Yeah. In trucking. Good yeah. question. Yes. And this has been actually, Jim Mackey oh. mentioned this on the show, one of the last seven shows. So if you were oh. listening, Kumar. You might know this. Oh, man. Green Stamp uh, Highway. Something you might hear on a CB. That means... <laughs> Google it. Ray? Hold, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Don't tell him yet, Ray. <laughs> His time has not run out just yet. We're getting there. I'm... That is a Google. highway that... You don't have to worry about the weight of the load. Wrong. That <laughs> Every highway you that worry about. That would be generous. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Green Stamp. Is Green Stamp Highway to is a toll road. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. It's a toll road. Toll road, right? Yep. Good job, Ray. It's a toll road. Good job, Ray. <laughs> yeah. All right, Coom. How about this? I didn't even answer it. <laughs> what is the standard height of a trailer dry van or reaper is it a 11 4 b 12 2 c 13 6 or d 20 feet i'm gonna have to say c 13 6 wow he's getting good he's yeah. good. Wow. He's learning right. something on the he show must been reading some signs well, on you the must be looking at yeah. coffee yeah. cups again no i'm thinking about like bridges i think that probably yeah. helped me a little That's bit next week <laughs> All right, we got time for one more. Russ? Yeah, there was this was a cool one. I J- Joel mentioned to me the other day, so let's do it. All right, Kumar, multiple choice. Who invented the first eighteen wheeler? Was it A. Alexander Hamilton, <laughs> B. Alexander Graham Bell, <laughs> C. Alexander the Great, <laughs> or D. Alexander Winton? Okay, I feel like you guys are insulting my intelligence now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Alexander Winton. Ding, ding, that is correct. Wow. Alexander. Yeah, I, agree. I, agree. I agree with that. Is that a guess? Alexander the Great. <laughs> well, process of elimination. <clears throat> okay. You must have heard that one before. Yeah. I, actually, the- I actually didn't didn't think that it was the other three because the other three 
did something else. So that was that's the only reason why I went with the last one. <laughs> Alexander did great. Did something. What was really cool when I didn't know this either, and and Joel showed me on Wikipedia. He's from Cleveland. Oh, he's a he's Scottish immigrant, but he but settled in in North Cleveland and invented the first combination vehicle. Huh. Yeah, thought it was really cool. Yeah, way back in the early 20th century, he uh, 1898, he needed a combination vehicle. To... That's when Tom was born, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think Tom, yeah. around that time. <laughs> he booked his first load. Do you know him, Tom? <laughs> Tom was in the black and white picture on Wikipedia. Did you see him? <laughs> All right, so Ian, right. what's going on in the wide world of trucking news? Well, not really too many news stories in the news. Uh, they're still working on the bridge down there. It's creating a log jam still. Uh, they're, they're really trying to now figure out who's going to pay for it. Um, they're trying to figure out the state or the federal government or the city. Uh, they're all pointing fingers elsewhere. Um, so that that's going to be a problem for a long we time, are. I see. Um, you already touched on it, but the first storm of the year, first name storm, um, that is 10 days early than, than on average. Um, what was the name of it? Anna. Anna is our first storm. Tropical depression, Anna? Or uh, is it a storm? Tropical storm. Lake Anna. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's usually 16 storms a year or yeah, last year was way more than that. I, I was going to say, it was 30. So Yeah, double. Get ready. It could be another crazy year. Um, that, of course, could mess with the fuel prices. Um, well, where's this Anna going? Because I'm going on vacation next week after next week's show, and I'm going to be in the Caribbean. Well, last one I saw, it was still coming over our direction from Africa. Um, I, I think it might just uh, run its legs out. Oh, okay. It'll, it'll go where you're going, Russ. Trust yeah, me. I hope it it'll, doesn't it'll go anywhere you. near. It's on a beeline straight to Aruba. Yeah, I'm exactly. going to be in Aruba for four, four or five days. <laughs> it'll probably go way before. It'll probably show far. up as soon as I get there the next day. <laughs> so, yeah, as 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 the waters get warmer, expect more, yeah. more storms. Um, you already touched on the blitz after the week of the 4th of July. Yeah. Uh, other than that, not too many new stories. The... Largest tanker, not largest tanker, largest cargo ship ever to be on the East Coast was this week. Uh, it was the Marco Polo. It stopped in New Jersey, and then it's uh, now in Savannah. And it's going to be going to Charleston. Uh, yeah, I think Charleston at some point. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, big, big, big boat. Um, yeah. Something like 3,000 cargo containers, something like that. Matthew, I'm sure it's already on the screen, but Matthew will put that up so everybody can see it. It's really cool. Yeah. It's about 13,000 feet, though. So, or 1,300 feet long. Wow. So, 13,000 yeah. <laughs> feet long. That'd, yeah, be, that'd be pretty, pretty, pretty enormous. Pretty <laughs> so, uh, Brian, um, I know we talked a little bit last week about the, the used and new truck market. Um, Ian wanted to talk to you on here. Brian, what are you seeing? Down there, you know, you 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 work for TruckWorks. They've got ten dealerships. Yeah, can you tell us about TruckWorks first? So TruckWorks uh, was established in 1978 uh, with just one dealership out of Birmingham, and they've since grown it. Um, about ten years ago, we had Kenworth of Dothan, Kenworth of Mobile, Kenworth of Birmingham, and they changed the name to TruckWorks because. We're a Hino dealer, a Suzu dealer, Kenworth dealer, uh, Bluebird school bus dealer. Um, we used to carry quite a few trailers, and we're still dealers <laughs> for them as well. So that's where the name Truck Works come from. Um, and we do have 10 different dealerships, uh, nine being in the state of Alabama, one in Mississippi. Um You're looking for the used truck market or what you? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me about the used market? I mean, is this a good time to buy a used truck or did you already miss the boat? Or should you should, should you wait a while? What what would you uh, say? So the, used, you looking? so the used truck market right now is um, the value is going up uh, and they are hard to find. Where new trucks are getting... 
taking their they're slow coming in right now uh, there's a lot of shortage of supplies on the new side so we're our inventory is very slim with all of our dealerships right now as with all of our competitors as well how many used um, trucks do you have uh, uh, among all 10 dealerships Brian we have 17 on the class 8 side right now how many Dora uh, so, the Explorer lunch boxes do you have Brian <laughs> 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 and slim on the yetis too yeah <laughs> who is um, buying trucks really uh the market's hot right now we yeah. we're lots of people are calling and i'm listening to you guys talk about the rates and everybody wants trucks right now and we've uh kind of looked out into the future and we've bought a lot of slots if you will uh so kind of pre-bought them so. pre-selling stuff new stuff correct so we, we buy slots and then we can uh, do a change order and kind of fill in that slot with, to meet your needs. Uh, but right now we're almost sold out for the year. Uh, we just bought some more slots the other day, but I think that's going to wrap us up. Um, it's getting tight right now. And, and the used trucks, I guess everybody's holding on to them. They're, they're very hard to find. Yeah. Um, very few in our inventory. And the same with, uh, on the medium duty side as well, we're we're short on them. It's just I think there's a shortage shortage of supplies. I know a lot of electronic parts um, are hard to get a hold. Of, and I think that's holding up production somewhat. But we're still pressing forward. We're doing everything that we can. We've got a good team in place, and you know looking looking further than just today, and helping setting us up and doing everything that we can for our customers to keep them rolling. Yeah. Um, I know Doty checks your website all the time to look at what's in inventory in your used trucks. And like he said last week on the show that, it, you know, it's like, there's just nothing, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Very few trucks. Um, does your, you guys have a buyer, Brian, does, do they like go to auctions and look for equip, you know, used equipment? Is it, is there, I was curious about that. Like with the, the big truck auctions, is there stuff available? It's just that it's, bit, it's, it's going for such a high price that, you know, you just kind of shy away from it or what? I, I think so. I don't, I don't dip into that too much. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a couple buyers here at the company, and, and they have contacts all over the U.S., really. Um, and they try and buy trucks, but they're just slim. And I think with the value being high right now, it's – a little scared to maybe bring them into our inventory because you know you sooner or later I, with everything yeah. the bottom will fall out and you'll be standing there with a bag so right um but we are trying to get more used inventory we've got some day cabs in but it's you know on the sleeper side it's it's tight it is tight yeah. and a lot of what we're seeing I tell people this every day before we see it on our list before the truck comes in and a lot of what, what we're seeing will sell before it even hits the ground. Mm -hmm. um, the market's hot. People are wanting trucks, which is great, but it's, it's hard to fill their needs right now. Yeah. I mean, I want a few more trucks. I think Christian probably wants some trucks, but it's just, it's hard to pull the trigger when first of all there's no inventory and and then you're going to pay through you know you're just going to pay a premium for it uh, you know on the used truck market um, yeah and brian I, i'd love to know what the prices look like next year i know we talked about the trailer prices going up from a 33 to 37 to over forty thousand dollar spec and i'm not sure if you guys are hearing anything in the pipeline for next year i mean obviously you're going to start grabbing slots the next year and what the next three months we will we're, we're, we're looking out into that right now. Um, and there's, and, and the price is going up. Of course you dip into a new year model, uh, the sleeper side, the six eighties, you're going to the next generation truck, which is a little bit of a price increase. And there's some steel surcharges coming along, um, you know, kind of getting hit every which way with it, but it's what it is. I mean, it's, it's the market right now and you just got to keep moving forward. Yeah, and I think that's the one thing that a lot of the general public's not aware of, too, is there's a lot of other charges going up. We have that vehicle mileage tax that's being proposed. Um, you know, I know there's infrastructure bills and everything else to help offset for some of the, the supply side. But, Brian, I mean, we get the steel tax. 
uh, used vehicles are up. Um, I mean, what else are you seeing on the new model trucks uh, that's going to be adjusting that price? So you said a generational jump, right? I mean, at least you're, at least when you're paying more money, you're getting something for it. Correct. Uh, getting a new, a new year model, the steel surcharges um, that they're tacking on to us right now, that that's that's really all but it's they're just covering their expenses you know on their side i mean yeah. steel's going up it's going up everything's going up so you know we're not we're not making any more money here right. we're just you know, pass through it's just being passed passed along mm -hmm. um well brian keep us informed on the trucking market i know you do we talk uh, quite a bit um but you know ian's very fascinated too with the uh with the whole new and used truck market. Yeah, I mean, I would like to eventually buy my own truck as well and put a driver in it, but I don't think right now is the is the right time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it you know it depends if you got the freight and the money you know to uh, to keep that truck. I mean, the freight's good. You just that's the hard thing. You don't know what next year, like you said, Christian. What's right. it going to be? What's it going to be a year from now? And then and did you pay you know thirty forty percent more than you know, you would, you, you, sh you could have, you know, this time last year for that used truck. Right. So. And, and I think sometimes when you wait too long into a market like Bitcoin sometimes, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. But well, when yeah. you wait into a market, you're typically susceptible to all the changes. I mean, as prices drive up and fuel costs go up, uh, the next thing we're going to see uh, as things continue to progress that way, because it's usually in the commercial industry are tolls mm -hmm. and it's highway fees. It's that vehicle mileage tax that's being introduced that, uh, OIDA was uh, and or ATA was trying to defend against. I mean, you know, they know that there's 7.9 million people in the trucking industry, uh, so they know it's a big target. So it doesn't take a lot of it does, you don't have to move the needle a lot, but move a little bit of the needle for a lot of people, and that's something that our cost will continue to grow through this post-pandemic recovery, and that's something we should be mindful and have our spreadsheets out for. Yeah, let's look into that, Christian. Let's go over that next week because I okay. haven't had a. Ch I know what you're talking about. I just haven't had a chance to read anything about it. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's a. I understand they've, there's infrastructure things that need to be done on our roads and bridges, but um, it, you know it's going to affect all of us as drivers or as operations. If uh, I mean where there's going to be tolls, it's going to cost us money. Yeah. So, but yep. well, Brian, thanks for joining us on the show today. Um, I'm going to take us out with, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hang around. We've got Ray and Johnny five. Um, we'll talk to, uh, Ray, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Johnny, are you with us? Yep. I'm here. So let me introduce you Ray. So Ray started a prayer group, uh, with, uh, a bunch of truck drivers on our fleet. And then it kind of spilled over a few years ago. It kind of spilled over, uh, to other drivers, uh, some that aren't with Metal Lark, some that are uh, with other companies, and then there's a few people in there that aren't even in the trucking industry, and it's and it's a really cool thing what Ray did. It's basically every morning he he puts a prayer out there for you know every driver and and on our fleet and any Metal Lark driver and any truck driver in America, you know, just have a a good safe day. Um, and then Ray invited me to join that group. And Johnny was in that group, and uh, there's an old movie called Short Circuit. So Ray gave Johnny the nickname uh, Johnny Five, like the robot from that from that movie. So we've been calling him that for several years in our text group, and it's a really cool group because um, I, I know you guys know. Well, it's on our fleet. You know, Arvid is not with us anymore, but he's, I still talk to Arvid. We're good friends. He's uh, he's in that group. Robert Selby's in that group. Johnny's in it. And, you know, yeah, Ray puts a prayer up in the morning, and, and it's great. Um, and then the rest of the day, it's clean. Everybody keeps it clean in there. And then the rest of the day, if you got a problem with your truck, there's a bunch of good, solid guys in there, drivers, that will help you. I mean, there's so many times everybody's talking about how to fix this or how to fix that. And that's how I got to know Johnny. And, and there's a lot of joking that goes on and – uh so that's how we know Johnny. He's in our uh, our trucker prayer group that Ray started. So Johnny, um, uh, tell us about yourself, man. I know Johnny, you were in the Marine Corps. Yep, I was in the Marines for four years, 2010, 2014. 
uh, stationed in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Camp Geiger. I was the uh, wambulance, as I always called it. I was the safety vehicle. So if a Marine ever happened to accidentally get hurt for whatever reason during a hike or a uh, round blew up on accident inside the weapon, I was the one that took them at least to meet the ambulance unless it was dire enough that they're like, hey, guess what? You're going to the hospital. Yeah, so they called that the wambulance? That's what I called it <laughs> yeah. because uh, it was the second phase of training for all Marines. Uh, yeah. For those that were not infantry personnel, it was called MCT, Marine Combat Training. And then for knows those what that, is. that were... And then uh, for the infantry guys, it was just the infantry training battalion. So every Marine's a rifleman. I'm sure you guys have heard that. And it's just we have to know at least basic door kicking skills, even though we may never use it. I never used it, but I got stuck at that training command. But at least I knew basic skills of how to go in, knock a door down, clear a house, and make sure that all the men and women to my left and right were safe. Yeah. So that was you're, where now you're truck driving. <laughs> yep. That was actually where I got my start uh, in driving. I was originally actually supposed to be a military police, but all the slots were filled when I went to sign up. So I was like, well, that sucks. I was like, what else is available? And my recruiter handed me a list and he goes, I was like, what's motor T transport operator. And he goes, Basically, you drive a truck. I was like, hey, I like driving. Okay. Yeah. And I also always put myself in the mindset of whatever job I get in the military, I need to make sure it translates to something in the civilian world because I'm not going right. to be in forever. We so, talked about that. So, in, is this, the, so is it safe to say, Johnny, that you kick trailer doors now for a living? <laughs> well, not with this low boy. I mean, with. With that drive van and the reefer that I've oh, played you're around with. Oh, you're a low boy now. <laughs> yep, I got a low boy yeah. now. I we forgot about, about that. Used to be dr- yeah. We talked about it at the agent summit, Ryan, if you remember, because uh, I asked to our insurance agents about bringing guys that got, you know, training in the military when they get out to, if we, you know, if we could look into having a training program um, where we could bring those guys on and, and get them trained for, you know, civilian or truck driving. Yep, um, we're looking. I know that uh, Mike yeah. Candace is uh, looking at that. It's definitely something we want to tap into because yep. they get a lot of great uh, <laughs> experience out there. Uh, and we definitely want to, if we can make that happen, we want to utilize them. Cause yeah, even the insurance guy, uh, what's his name? Hurricane, Hurricane Skip. Yeah, Skip. Yeah, Hurricane Skip, I like that. Because yeah. uh, when he comes in, he comes in like a hurricane. Oh, he? <laughs> bring, brings him in and goes out with it. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that would, he was even open to that. He just wanted a good plan put together. Yep. So I'm excited about that. Um, Johnny, what you're hauling a, uh, low boy now. What are you, what are you hauling? What's on it? I I'm hauling medium duty Chevrolets and Fords, as well as Isuzu's. Uh, occasionally we get some Hino's, uh, Fuso completely fell out. So, uh, we're finishing up the last little bit of Fuso's that, Mitsubishi had produced. Are you bringing almost... in any of them to Truck Works? Because they sell those down there. You know, Please it's, bring actually, it it's actually hilarious. So the trucks that Truck Works gets actually come out of Montreal. And I had picked up, uh, before I really started listening to Talking Trucking with Deaton and Dottie. And by the way, howdy, Dottie. <laughs> <laughs> But he had some uh, technical difficulties. He he couldn't get it hooked up today. So, yeah. But I had actually gone to Richlands, Mississippi, for Truck Works there and Truck Works in Birmingham. Uh, I think it was that was two weeks ago. Oh, so you dropped off there? Yep. Well, that's a and I thought it about was, that. Yep, it was uh, Kenworth for each of them, and I went over to Peterbilt in Pearl, Mississippi, and dropped off a, uh, a Peterbilt for them. Uh, probably going to get turned into a dump truck or some type of city vehicle. No big boy toys, but so it's Brian, still Brian, nice. now you know you got connections through me. If you need something, just let me know. I'll get Johnny Five on it, and uh, we'll get it down there to you. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Johnny, if you ever come hey. through Dothan, come see me. If you drop off here, come see me. Oh, get, yeah. Get I definitely will. Rollers. Yep. We'll see what we can get for you. Definitely. He can take you to Cracker Barrel. There's a Cracker Barrel everywhere. <laughs> I'm convinced. Right After driving to, to Destin, Florida, because usually I fly everywhere, but – we were uh, we drove down there, and uh, after driving there, I'm convinced there's a Cracker Barrel everywhere, every off of every exit, <laughs> every highway. There's a Cracker Barrel. It seemed like that and Dollar General, and Dollar General, yeah. Dollar well, hey, General, let me jump in. Exit. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. I'm, a, I'm gonna I'm cutting out. You know, it's past my bedtime. Just wanted to say thank you. Yeah. Y'all be safe. Have a good holiday weekend. I gotta go take care of my garden. And we will talk to you tomorrow, Don't Tom. Don't press hold. And and I, I we're we're about at that point too. And I just wanted to tell you know everybody, Johnny, Ray, uh, Christian, Joel, Ryan. Thanks a lot for coming on with us. We appreciate it. We appreciate your insight and the experience you have over the years. Uh, and to all our staff here, Matthew, my son Kumar, our producer Zach Kern, and Ian Dunlap in the news. Thank you guys, Doty. We missed you tonight. He tried to get on. He popped on for a little bit, and uh, I don't know, something, the wires got crossed in Florida, or maybe that tropical storm Anna hit. Not really sure. No. <laughs> However. No storm yet. <laughs> no storm yet. Um, but I want to give a couple shout-outs, like I always do, to Brian Ashmore and Truck Works of Dothan, Alabama. We appreciate you, Brian. Over the road apparel. Work clothes for the modern-day trucker. Prime Wellness and Performance in San Antonio, Texas. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And has anybody got anything else? If not, go Browns, go Indians, and go Cavaliers. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Go Raiders. <laughs> <laughs>